Thursday, December 30th, 21. Thank you for being here once again as we say goodbye to 2021 and rush to greet 2022. It's been a difficult year, one in which oh, we had a lot of hope, a lot of expectation. The one thing that didn't change this year and one that will not change next year is the love that God has for us. So let's abandon all that holds us back and rush out to greet not only the new year, but our Father in Heaven. Let's get started. So we are continuing our pursuit of the meaning of life trusting that there's a simpler answer out there, one that will not require us to sequester ourselves or spend a lifetime in research, but is readily available to each and every one of us. Today we are going to look at the sunrise. There's something special about the sunrise. It speaks to God's heart in this renewal process that he promises in relationship to him. Each day is a new opportunity to do it better than we did it the day before. It also speaks of the light coming into the world, representing Jesus and followers of Christ, that has meaning. And it also is just a beautiful spectacle as light enters and the sky displays all the magnificent colors. I wish we had more time to enjoy sunrise. About the only time that I recognize and enjoy the sunrise is when I'm on vacation. Sunrises are magical when time slows and you have the opportunity to just sit on a porch somewhere a cup of coffee and the patience to watch it come over the horizon. Most days, sunrise is like an alarm clock. Perhaps we didn't sleep very well the night before. And sunrise is an, a reminder of another day Time to make the donuts. Clock in, clock out, move on. I appreciate the sunrises more now than ever, as I recognize that we are only given so many. And the sunrise is a reminder to take more time to enjoy more moments, especially with those that we love and those who are traveling with us on this journey. I want to encourage you to take time today to enjoy life to the fullest. Ecclesiastes 11, 7. Light is sweet, and it pleases the eye to see the sun. However many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all. But let them remember the days of darkness. For there will be many 
Everything to come is meaningless. Not every day brings a sunrise. I don't know about you, but I, if every morning I'm greeted with fog and drizzle and cloudiness, it affects my mood. Perhaps I wasn't aware of the sunrise, but I certainly am aware when, when it isn't there. And that's a life lesson as well, to enjoy the moments of, of health, enjoy the moments of peace, enjoy the moments of joy. Because there's also a mix of hardship and brokenness and bad report. Enjoy every sunrise that you can. Continuing the nine, you who are young, be happy while you are young and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart, whatever your eyes see. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. It's a misnomer that to be a follower of Christ is to give up living life. To be sequestered away in a, a commune, to be walled off, to not be able to enjoy anything that this life offers. There's nothing further from the truth. God desires for us to enjoy this life to the full and enjoy every aspect of it. He knows the desires of your heart. He knows what brings a smile to your face, and he wants you to invite him in. It is true. We are called to live not by our will, but by, by God's will. We are called to sacrifice ourself in pursuit of him, just as we witnessed Jesus do. But if we are willing to live within the boundaries that God sets for us and choose to live according to his word, there is freedom and joy and peace beyond measure. Do we question that Jesus lived every moment he walked this earth to the fullest? So can we. Jesus' life was one of service and one of being the good shepherd. But I believe that everyone who saw him saw the joy that he carried with him each and every day. And if you ask Jesus, I am certain he would tell you, that he wouldn't do it any other way. That should be our testimony as well. Now remember, Ecclesiastes written by someone who is advanced in years and looking back on their life. The older I become, the, the younger I thought I was grown when I was in my 30s. Now, I consider people in their 30s children. So, from this 
author's perspective, from Solomon's perspective, now that he's advanced in years, everyone who is younger than him are the youth that he is speaking to. And the wisdom that he has gained in his lifetime is, I wish I enjoyed more moments. And then he leaves that small reminder that in pursuit of joy, in pursuit of, of a full life, always put God first and remind, be reminded that you are going to be held accountable to God's standard. But enjoy life. Continuing in 10, so then, banish anxiety from your heart and cast off troubles of your body. For youth and vigor are meaningless. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. What holds you back? What keeps you from living the life that God has blessed you with to the fullest? Often what's found at the root of our stillness, our, our reluctance, is anxiety and fear. In relationship to God, there is no fear. We can cast all of that off and choose to live free. No matter what our abilities or disabilities are, choose life. can't be measured by what we could do, could do when we were younger. Do what you can now. We get to a place in life where through our looking back, I remember when I was stronger. I remember when I, I could run faster. I remember when I could... And if we spend too much time in regret of the things that we can no longer do, we waste the things that we can still do. I believe from Solomon's perspective, he has reached the place, perhaps what has brought this desire to share this wisdom with the generations that are coming behind him, Perhaps he woke one day and said, I find no pleasure in life at all. That's a terrible place to get to. And the one that he desires to caution, God desires to caution us never to pursue. Enjoy whatever life you have to the fullest. Not living the rest of your days in regret of the things you can't do, but focusing on the things you can do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We pray for a glorious sunrise today. Not only the physical sunrise that will appear on the horizon, the sunrise in our hearts, the renewal that you grant us each and every day. If we have not been living our life to the fullest, if we have not been pursuing joy, today is a new day.
Today is the day to enjoy more moments. While we still draw breath, while we still, <laughs> from someone's standard, can consider ourselves young and youthful, let us make the most of it, Lord. We thank you for this life. We thank you for the relationships that you have given us. We thank you for the joy that we experience the laughter and the smiles that you bless us with each and every day. Help us to have the courage to live our lives out loud and display your sunrise to a sleeping world. For your glory and honor, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, meet you back here for a Friday wrap-up. Hopefully you have started to see the picture of the meaning of life, but we will put an exclamation on it tomorrow. Till then, know that I love you and I miss you. Till I see you again, please be good.